This is Exile Bro. Oh, hey, what's up? I'm Exile Bro. A name and intro I totally didn't steal from anyone. He is my first old school RuneScape character ever. He's also an Iron Man, currently free to play, a complete noob, and finally exiled in the world of RuneScape. You're probably wondering what being exiled means. Exiled is a challenge I made where you are banned from entering any area, generally a city, that has a pole booth. For example, Lumbridge. It normally looks like this, but for me, well, now it looks like this. Being exiled means I can't pass into this red border, you know, unless I die. And the same stands for every other area in the game with a pull booth. Meaning on top of the already limited area I have access to, because I'm not a member, my world map looks like this. Why? That's a good question. And one I do not have an answer to. As an easy way to visualize where I can and can't go, I'll be using the RuneLate plugin Region Locker. Now the areas I'm banned from won't be based on these chunks, but it will be enabled just as a visual indicator of where I can and can't go, both for me and for you guys watching so I don't accidentally cheat. The real limits are more up to common sense and honestly just what makes sense and what doesn't. There is another reason that rule is super vague because I do not have nearly enough knowledge to know if this is an immediate soft lock or not because as i said i know absolutely nothing about old school runescape and future editing me is honestly already regretting this challenge but we'll get to that later i started where all good runescape characters start tutorial island a place that no matter how experienced of a player you are you still have to go through after the creation of any character not really interesting, I just ran around trying to be as quick as possible and not get any more XP than necessary. Before leaving, I talked to Paul, the Iron Man tutor. Paul informs you that Iron Man mode is for maskist idiots, and it's a terrible idea. But despite that, I still turned it on because it sounded fun. It isn't, but again, I'll get to that later. And with that done, I teleported to Lumbridge to start my legendary journey of arbitrary and stupid restrictions. I prepared to say goodbye to the one civilization I will ever know, and hello to my life as an exile. Exile, bro. You have been found guilty of crimes against Miss Halen and her people. Do you have any final words to say before you're exiled and banished from our lands forever? I, I'm innocent. Please, listen to me. Shut it! You're lucky we're not executing you. Enough! Father. If you believe he's worthy, please, bless him quickly so he can get this scum out of my sight. Of course, your highness. Though you may have strayed, I pray that Saradonim guide you down a different path. One with safety and protection. Father, please. I apologize, but I cannot do any more for you. I wish you a good life, my son. Thank you, father. Now, exile, bro. You are hereby banished in the land of Miss Halen. Use this second chance wisely. I won't be merciful the second time. Come on, get up. Unless you want to die right here. I'll, I'll go. I won't cause any more problems. We'll be keeping an eye on you. So don't do anything stupid, you hear? Immediately after arriving in Lumbridge, I dropped all of my items and ran into the nearest forest. I thought it was only fair to do so, since the tutorial island would actually be banned by my own rules. I would later come to regret this, because as a free-to-play player, I would never see some of these items until many, 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 MANY hours of grinding. I spent the next hour trying to figure out how to make runelight plugins work, and while doing so, I got attacked by a mugger, which I tried fighting, and it went great. Totally. Round one. Fight. Yeah, I ran away because I almost died in the first hour of the challenge, which made me confident, totally. After recovering enough HP to not be on the brink of death, with no idea where to start, I decided to just start punching rats, goblins, and really anything around me that would give me XP. This didn't really result in anything, as you might expect, 
killing two goblins, then waiting five years for my HP to naturally regen doesn't really progress my character in any meaningful way. After looking around the map for literally any idea of what I should do, I spotted two interesting symbols outside of Lumbridge to the south. Like in Tutorial Island, there are tutors all over Lumbridge, which can give you free items so you don't end up in a situation like the one I'm in, where even the most basic of items are far, far out of your reach. I literally celebrated at this discovery because it would give me infinite access to being able to fish and mine that didn't rely on a stupid mob drop. With a bag full of raw shrimp and a pickaxe in hand, I went back to killing goblins. Super interesting. I know. Amazing content. Oh, I also yoinked some free leather gloves from this random house. Thanks, old man. Like most MMOs, RuneScape is no stranger to quests. Missions given to you by NPCs to do their shit for them because they are incapable of free will. Or, I mean, immersion! Or something, I don't know, this quest is just a means to an end for me. It allows me to get two very valuable items, which, if I complete this quest, I'll have an infinite source of. Anyway, at the fishing and mining tutors, you may have noticed these two people near the coast, just there. The only reason I knew they were the start of a quest is because I saw this icon on the map. If that wasn't there, I wouldn't even know, because I'm antisocial and would rather farm goblins than talk to people, let alone NPCs. Pushing past my extreme anti-socialness, I meet Abigail and Huey, but he doesn't talk. She explains that they were invited to a house party on a random island. It was great until someone got fucking murdered. They managed to escape and then just wait here without alerting guards or any kind of real authority. Instead, they ask me, some homeless guy, to bring a killer to justice. Yeah, this isn't suspicious at all. Anyway, I'm told I can use this rowboat on the coast to row all the way over to the island. When I get there, I first notice, oh shit, everything is blue. This is a shader from the region locker plugin to show where I can and can't go. Unfortunately, this area doesn't show up on the map, but with a healthy amount of not knowing what I'm doing, I was able to figure it out. Anyway, with that solved, I head up to the mansion and try opening the doors, but of course, that'd be too easy. It's locked. I head around the side of the mansion just to watch a guy get murdered in front of me, and instead of immediately walking around the barrel and stabbing the murderer, I just don't do anything, making me consider whether or not I was the actual NPC all along. Pushing that existential thought aside, I search the barrel, but magic water is in my way, and I can't reach whatever's in the bottom. Using my Giga Brain, I'm able to notice the bucket on the ground as the solution to this 500 IQ puzzle. Dump out the water, search the barrel again, and hey, a key. Back to the mansion doors, which this time I can now open. Inside, I find a knife, interact with a ton of random stuff, then spot another person in a room. Unfortunately for me, the door is locked, and the handle has a trap card, which triggers a cutscene where they also just get murdered. The killer slides a cryptic note under the door, and once again breaks the laws of physics. The note is a riddle, which led me to try and stab every single painting because I didn't want to actually solve the riddle, and fortunately for me, there's no fail condition. And so, with enough art ruined, I eventually found a ruby key behind one of the paintings. Using this, let me unlock the door to another room, where you could get an infinite source of the main item I did this quest for, a tinderbox. Anyway, here's another puzzle. The solution, lighting the candles in the room to dry the rope that is damp, to explode the barrel, and get through the wall that is almost already not even a wall. I head around the back to another NPC, and can you guess what happens when I try to talk to them? Yeah, they just get killed again. At this point, I'm starting to think it's more about me than it is about them, but I digress. It's time for another puzzle. Being the showman that they are, the killer gives me another note with another riddle after killing another person. This one involves an obvious piano that is interactable and really the only notable thing in this entire area of the mansion. It reads, it's like music to my ears, the glorious sounds spelling out your fate. I play the notes D-E-A-D -E on the piano, and the genius among you may have noticed that spell's dead, solving the riddle, which was just a long way of the killer telling me they're gonna kill me. Solving this riddle gives you an emerald key, and access to another room back at the entrance of the mansion. I head to the room, unlock the door, and see another NPC inside a room with a locked door. I'm sure we can all see where this is going. Yep, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're dead, okay. The killer slides to the third and final riddle under the door. Blah blah blah, go to this fireplace, cut open the back, click the gems, and boom, key! This leads to the final room and the final confrontation. Once again, being the absolute useless robot I am, the killer walks straight up to me, says I'm not the big hero everyone thinks I am, and decides to pull off a cartoon villain moment. Well, I did have this big speech planned out, but quite frankly, I don't think you're worth the effort it would take to deliver it. So, this is the end of the line for you. It is time for the final act, the showdown, the finale! Let's see if you're up to the challenge.
and for whatever reason during all of this, I don't just stab him and instead let him return to his reality bending closets for a boss fight. The killer will teleport between these four closets. When the killer teleports to a new closet, it'll give off smoke particles, alerting you to their location. Instead of, you know, opening the closet doors, grabbing them and giving them an immediate removal of their soul from their body, you instead have to move the mirror to point towards the closet they are currently in. This is because after some time when teleporting into a new closet, they will throw a knife out in a straight line before teleporting to another closet and repeating the loop until one of you die. If the mirror is in front of the closet when they throw a knife, the knife will recoil and instead stab them. Repeat this enough times and they'll eventually jump out and confront you once again. This time though, they just complain that it's so unfair that they couldn't murder a ton of people without any consequences. And a big reveal! Turns out the murderer is Abigail, the person who sent me on this quest in the first place. And she wasn't alone. Her boyfriend, Huey, had helped her. They worked together to murder people. Abigail was taking all the credit in her monologue, which made Huey mad and declare that they were equals, which made Abigail just stab Huey. And then Huey dies, Abigail cries, and the dialogue just ends, and I am left very confused. And honestly, not really knowing what to do, I take Huey's knife, stab Abigail, and then just leave, I guess? But despite me stabbing her, when I try to leave, she once again pulls out the cartoon villain speeches, which brings me to my favorite moment of the final quest. Mandy, who is somehow not dead, grabs the Bando God Sword and finishes Abigail off. For good, thank God. I head outside, talk to Mandy, and complete the quest. And with that, the Miss Alien mystery is solved. I wouldn't really consider it a good ending. I mean, like, a ton of people just died. And... I wasn't even able to kill Abigail. Mandy had to finish my job because apparently I can't use a knife. But with plot holes aside, I now had an infinite source of a knife, a bucket, and a tinderbox. With that small detour complete, I headed up to Barbarian Village just to cook some shrimp because even if I had a tinderbox, I don't have an axe. And can you guess what I did afterwards? I killed more goblins! Riveting gameplay. I, I know, it's it's a miracle. While killing more helpless goblins, I did more research into possible gear upgrades that I could get, since as a free-to-play player, my options were very, very, very limited. Throughout the world of RuneScape, there are items that regularly spawn in various locations. Some useful, and some not. I happened to learn of a steel sword spawn, which, outside of mob drops, caskets, and other unlikely things, was my most reliable weapon upgrade. And probably my only weapon upgrade for the next hundreds of hours of the challenge, unless I got blessed by the god of RNG, and even then I doubt it. The only downside of this steel sword is that it is spawned inside the wilderness. If you haven't played RuneScape, you probably don't know what the wilderness is or why I don't want to travel through it. Normally, RuneScape is a completely PvE game. This is true for the entire world except for the wilderness, where PvP is enabled for everyone inside. Now, there are other ways to do PvP, like in mini games and other such things, but generally in those types of activities, you don't run the risk of losing your items. But in the wilderness, you can lose it all. Anything you have on you, you can lose. Now, there are some rules with combat level, who you can attack, who you can't attack, and some stuff with what you can and can't lose, but I didn't feel like learning all of that. So all I knew is I could die, I could lose everything, and I did not want that to happen at all. I made my way up to Edgeville, followed the ditch between the safe zone and the wilderness. I came to this little bit where you either have to cross a bridge to continue the path, or walk around through the wilderness to continue going forward. Stubbornly, I stuck to the challenge, made a quick detour through the wilderness to continue walking along the ditch. And once I was south of where I needed to go, I made my dash. I decided I would walk to and from the sword spawn and only run if I was in trouble. And despite how nervous I was, this was literally the easiest thing I've done in the challenge so far. I didn't run into a single player, but still, I didn't want to try my luck too much since I'm lazy and honestly, I might have quit if I died and lost my stuff. I was already starting to come to the realization that this was going to be a really, really, really difficult challenge, and honestly, dying there in the wilderness might have given me the excuse to quit. So thankfully I didn't, and you get to watch me torture myself. With a fancy new weapon in hand, I headed to the goblin village to massacre some higher level enemies. 
but it was extremely inefficient, so I decided to look up some better spots to farm, as the goblins did more damage than I could heal, and the amount of time it took to get food was super annoying. This brought me to the monastery, and more specifically, monks. Now, technically, you can grind combat anywhere in RuneScape. No matter the difference in level, you will always gain XP at a rate of 4 XP per damage, and 1.33 hit point XP per 1 damage, small asterisk because some things don't do this, but generally, you'll be getting this amount of XP. The thing that really determines where you're grinding and what you're killing is how efficient it is to kill those mobs. Here's a list of the things that I used to determine where I was going to farm and what monsters I was considering grinding at. How long you can kill things before you need to regen HP. How long it takes you to regen HP, and if you're using food, get food. Your DPS to that specific enemy. Enemies all have different stats, and those with higher defense will be harder to hit, therefore lowering your DPS, therefore lowering your XP an hour. And finally, how busy the location is. These four things were what I looked at when I was trying to figure out where I was going to train combat at any given moment. And even during my feature grinds that I'm probably editing right now, but we'll talk about that another time. The absolute insane thing about monks is that you can just ignore the first two factors. This is because if you talk to a monk, you can ask them to heal you for a portion of your health. Although you can just repeat this infinitely, meaning no matter how much damage you take, you can always get to full HP in seconds. This made for a really funny situation where after killing a monk, I would run up to another monk that definitely saw me murder his friend in cold blood, pester them for as many heals as I needed, then just fucking stab them. As for the latter two factors, they have pretty good health for the combat level you'd farm them at, and pretty low defense, meaning farming them is relatively easy and quick. As for how busy the location is, well, during my time grinding combat there, I had only seen at most one other person grinding combat there, and with enough monks for three people to grind combat at the same time, I could confidently say it is a solid spot for free-to-play farming. Especially when you compare it to where I'm grinding combat next episode, <sighs> the monastery is like heaven. Next episode? Yeah, next episode! I've been editing for too long, and I haven't posted a video in months! Or weeks! Either way, it's been too long! I didn't get much done, but trust me, it gets much, much worse. And by worse, I mean the time that passes between clips will probably get into the hours by next episode, which is wonderful, and I'm not absolutely regretting this challenge at all. Like and subscribe if you want to watch me torture myself with the world's worst RuneScape rules, or just to get notified when I make videos, which will happen, probably. You should also comment to tell me how bad of an idea this is. You don't need to, though, because even in the few hours I've played, I already found out how dumb of an idea this is. The next episode coming out soon. I gotta get back to grinding. Bye!